Good afternoon, Dr. Andy Kirshner here, visiting you live from Bell Harbor, Miami, Florida. It's a nice muggy day here. The rain finally stopped, so I'm actually able to get out here and record some video. Uh, today I'd like to respond to a viewer question that I got in response to a post that I had on my Facebook page a couple of days ago about how you should never bend and twist at the same time. Now actually this wasn't one question, I got a whole bunch of comments from people, particularly as this uh, pertained to yoga. Namely, people who do yoga, they bend and twist at the same time. And some of the viewers wanted to know, well, if you're not supposed to bend and twist at the same time, what am I supposed to do if I want to do yoga? Well, this actually goes back to a conversation that I had with a physical therapist not that long ago. Uh, I was sitting with her at lunch, and she told me, you know, that, that this big uh, proliferation of yoga in the fitness world is what's keeping her in business right now. Because apparently a lot of people jump into yoga very enthusiastically looking for some fitness, and they find that... Uh, they're getting back pain as a result. Now here's a couple things. I think yoga by and large is very good for your back. I think that the range of motion exercises are good. The fact that you're stretching and getting some use of your large muscle groups is always a good thing. But like any fitness thing, it presents certain hazards. Now if you are going to do yoga, here's a few suggestions. One, and I will say this over and over and over again, hydrate. When your muscles are not adequately hydrated, you're a lot more likely to pull them, you're a lot more likely to have bad form, and that's going to result in injury. So first, get hydrated. Two, if you're starting out in yoga, again, it can be very interesting and, and fun, and you want to jump into it enthusiastically, like I said before. If you start and you find that there's a new posture that you're doing that causes you discomfort, kind of build into that one or back off that particular one until you have a little more experience and you can build up to it. If something is uncomfortable for you, don't do it. Now that's not to say that it shouldn't take some effort to get into those postures, but you really want to take the time to make sure that you're not getting hurt. So one, hydrate. Two, work your way into the postures, especially if they're new things and you're new to yoga. And the third one, and this is going to sound kind of interesting, particularly to those people who do hot yoga, but one of the best suggestions that I can give you is to take a few minutes before a workout uh, in yoga and take a long walk. 15, 20 minutes just to get your heart rate uh, feeding, get yourself a little bit warmed up, that will go a long way towards making sure your muscles are warm and you're not just jumping into a situation where you're hyperextending and putting yourself at risk. So those are my recommendations for those of you who would like to participate in yoga without hurting your back. Uh, again, I don't want to say that yoga is bad for your back, but again, like any fitness endeavor, it does present some risk. Those are my suggestions. I'd like to thank you for your cards and letters. Thanks for stopping by the Back Together blog, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Take it easy. Be well.